Uh, I'm okay, just a second. <laughs> Hello and welcome to iTuber. My name is Lena. And today we have a very interesting interview with Sapien uh, Network team. And the team is here. And welcome. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, uh, my name is Ankit, and I'm the CEO and co founder of Sapien. Uh, Sapien is a decentralized social news network uh, that wants to fight fake news, reward content creators, and share ad revenue with our users. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm the marketing lead at CMO at Sapien um, from Miami, and very excited to be here doing this interview with all of you. Cool. What's up? I'm Chris uh, from New York City, uh, head of PR. Uh, also do some of the marketing at Sapien. So uh, interested to see what you guys think and uh, looking forward to this. Awesome. I'm so excited about this. So many handsome people on a chat. OK, so <laughs> please tell me, how did it all start with Sapien Network? Whose idea was it? And how did you what, progress oh. on that? Whose whose idea was it? That's a that's, a, that's always a fun uh, uh, debate to have. But it actually started some time ago. It was more uh, of a project that Rob, my co-founder, and I were working on in 2015, 2016. We were just disappointed with the current state of social networks, the way that they were exploiting user data, and we thought that we could build a more privacy-focused social platform that would would. Uh, be democratic in its nature and, and give users a real voice. So we set out with this like, you know, crazy idea, hey, we're gonna go challenge, uh, you know, some of the big social networks in, uh, in the market with, with really strong core principles around privacy, around democracy, around free speech. And at that time I was studying electrical engineering and computer science, Rob was doing mathematics. So we had this sort of technical uh, expertise to start coding and just building away at this platform and it was just an incredible experience just building out this you know in between classes and after we sort of graduated in sort of early 2017 we started to look into the blockchain uh, as the sort of the best tool the best technology out there to build a more democratic platform and we began to just experiment with that we wrote a white paper for sapien and then we started to bring more and more passionate individuals onto the team who also resonated with our vision for the world. So that's sort of uh, you know where, where it all started. Yeah. Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, why don't you guys, Matt, Chris, you can also talk about uh, you know where uh, you guys jumped in and um, you know what value you saw in Sapien. No, sure. definitely. Um, so yeah, I. As we were talking about before, I had uh, a previous history with uh, marketing, digital marketing, uh, heavily focused on social media marketing. And it was actually pretty funny coincidence because at the time, I was becoming heavily frustrated with a lot of the social media platforms that were out there, especially from a marketing perspective. I was really realizing that the platforms themselves were dominated by bots. And a lot of the impressions that you were getting for your ads, you were essentially losing some of your money to fake impressions, right? Because you can see it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even those companies have come out and like stated that it's a serious problem that they're dealing with. Um, obviously on one end, they like it because it makes their uh, bottom line look better to stock uh, stakeholders, for example, saying they have X amount of users, but on the other hand, it hurts the user experience. So I was already growing frustrated with uh, those specific platforms and then started getting more into cryptocurrency, started getting more into ICOs, researching them, um, watching your interviews, uh, doing uh, research on my my own end. And then after that, OnKick and I connected online and I was completely sold on the idea of Sapien. I felt like there was a, a real use case. Um, I liked the fact that the team that was being assembled was really focused on delivering a product, which I feel like there needs to be more of now in the ICO space, more people who want to deliver and less just white paper ideas. And, and then uh, OnKick, introduced me to Chris, who was helping out with PR and marketing as well. And we just started working from there. Cool. Yeah. So my background also in digital marketing, uh, actually probably more heavily focused in that area. And so when I first got into crypto, it was more about being, I wouldn't say anonymous, but trying to stay a little bit under the radar. Obviously, now that I'm on the Sapien team, I kind of threw that out the window. But uh, <laughs> it was the whole point of being in uh, in crypto for me was to try and 
I wouldn't say, you know, be hidden, but, but me, but kind of just stay under the radar a little bit. And, um, and what, what I found in the current landscape in social media was, I think privacy was being an issue. And that was something that I uh, was really looking for in that in this whole crypto sphere. Uh, I had this whole thing about privacy coins early on, uh, and just being involved in them and, and really learning the technology. And so with all the stuff that was in social media and, and being in digital marketing, I know, in marketing in general, uh, data is huge. Uh, so, so getting to know your customer, getting to know who you're targeting, and really getting to know what they're really thinking about is is huge in that marketing sphere. Um, but it, but as someone that was trying to stay private and not have all that information just blasted out into the world, it was very important to me. Uh, so when I linked up with Ankit again uh, online, uh, you know, I was thinking like, you know, this is uh, an interesting project. You know, they're trying to make social media where you can kind of control your own data and be in control of that. So that was interesting to me. Uh, I met Matt um, just probably what, maybe a few days later and we just connected and just been running from there. And, uh, you know, and that was one of the things that, you know, I was speaking with them as well is when I look at you know, ICOs or projects in general, uh, I'm making sure that these projects aren't necessarily white paper projects, uh, that they actually have something, you know, or some work that's been done before. So when I, when I spoke with Ankit, and Rob, I found out that they actually had a beta available. That's something that you can play around with right now. So when I signed on, it was available right then and there. I didn't have to wait five weeks, six weeks, 10 weeks, or a year. Um, and so that was important to me. And I thought that was really cool that they actually already did a ton of the legwork uh, in, in actually getting a project or a, a product out there that people can actually play with. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the journey for us has been amazing. Uh, I know. Uh, we spoke about it a little bit earlier, but you know the whole team's been pretty much distributed. Uh, only a few weeks ago, we actually all, or the core team, actually met in person uh, right before uh, Token Fest in San Francisco. Um, and you know, just telling some of the stories about how we did our full presale before even meeting in person, uh, and and you know, raising that much amount, uh, raising that specific amount, has been just a story in itself to to be told. And you know, hopefully, you know, more stories are. Uh, ready to be made in the future, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, the reason I, I asked you to tell me, uh, Chris and Matt, um, the reason is because it's always interesting how teams get formed. Uh, why? Because more and more uh, ICOs are uh, sort of renting people. Because mm -hmm. some people approach me and say, hey, can you do the review of this project? I can say, yes or do the interview, and then the same person says, hey, you know what? We are also doing this SEO here and that SEO here. And then, that, and then I ask, what does that mean? Does that mean that you want the same team? It's No, it's not like that, but can you just do the review? So it's very important for us to know that you are real and that you're working on, on the real thing. OK, yeah. uh, then, uh, Ankit, you said that the idea was born in 2015, but you start looking into blockchain in mm -hmm. 2017 does that mean that there was a possibility to do this project without the blockchain oh not at all i mean we originally when we started we were building an end-to-end -end encrypted social network and that's actually like uh again like focused around privacy right because if you're encrypting every single piece of uh information on the web in a social context then you're truly respecting a user's data because a centralized corporation couldn't couldn't even read the data right so that was actually our first uh, you know, technical approach with the project. And it turned out to be just hard to scale. We were able to actually encrypt a lot of the posts and, and groups and, and uh, 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 subscription uh, categories, but it, be it became very hard to scale it, right? So like if we, us four were in a group and we wanted to encrypt all that data, <clears throat> it doesn't really scale that well to like 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people. So you know, we, we went down that path for a bit and we pivoted uh, into, into the blockchain space uh, just because we could accomplish the same sort of goals we set out with uh, in a way that was techno technologically feasible. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you decided to build your project on Ethereum platform, was there mm -hmm. any other option as well? Did you consider something else? Um, so Ethereum, like I, I've been a big fan of what they've been doing since the beginning. Uh, their community is fantastic. Their transparency, and 
uh, you know, even aside from the fact that it's so easy to launch our own token off of, uh, you know, Ethereum, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's very compelling in, in and of itself. Uh, I'm just a huge fan of, of, of their core principles that really were, were aligned with Sapien and what we want to do with uh, a truly decentralized approach, right? So this is, in my opinion, I think it's still more decentralized than other blockchains like EOS or Steam's graphene blockchain. Uh, and I, I do think that they're here to stay and, you know, there's tremendous uh, potential in their roadmap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then maybe uh, Sam, or oh, sorry, did I say Sam? Yeah. <laughs> I want to say Matt, sorry. Uh, maybe you will answer this question since you were in marketing. Uh, how exactly uh, Sapin Network is different from any other social network, from the centralized, let's say, yeah. social network? Um, I think that's our huge draw right now. And I think that's the reason we had such an outpour of people coming in from all over the world. 142 different countries actually were involved in our presale. It's a really cool figure. And I think it has a lot to do with, A, um, people are tired of feeling like they're in a position where they're being used by the social network. And something that we've really, our slogan that we've really pushed forward is that the users are the true value creators within a social network. When you actually think about it like that, it really makes a lot of sense. You take the users out of YouTube, you have nothing. You have an empty website. You take it out of Facebook, same thing, Twitter, same thing. And I really think what happened was the Web 2.0 social network experienced the bubble themselves. And I think it got to a level where they had so much power that now you're seeing what's happening with Facebook, where they're selling their data. There's no disregard for the users at all. And I think Sapien is really... Is, is not what I think, it's what it is, it's the exact opposite of that, right? We want you to control your own data. We want to empower users. We want to empower content creators. Like the blockchain gives us the ability to do all of those things. And then also having our own token, the SBN token is a way to reward these creators and just gamify the entire experience. And um, I think it's I think it's important for right now. And I, I the current uh, social network and the current, you've seen it right now in the news, it's all over the place. I think the world is looking for an alternative and we're putting ourselves into position to potentially be that alternative option. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your potential competitors, right. um, well, one of the competitor is uh, Steemit, right? How are you different from Steemit and why are you better than Steemit? Right. So I think there's a couple ways to look at that. One, from a platform perspective, they're night and day, right? So. I think Steemit is more of a blogging platform, but already Sapien in our beta form, uh, blogging is just one of the options. We also have peer-to-peer -peer chat. Uh, you can start and build your own community. Uh, there's more of like a Reddit slash Twitter feel to it. So I think within the platform already, there's more things you can do, but also to tons of credit to Steemit, right? It's a, a great project. It's done a, a great work. And I think there's a world where Sapien and Steemit can coexist. Um, I would like Onkick to comment on like some more of like the specific technical specs and differences he's there. But um, I think Steemit's model has proven that uh, this this model works, right? Because Steemit has achieved success, and you know, I guess in that those areas were kind of aligned. But I think Anke, you could talk more about the technical differences. Yeah, I would also say, aside from the platform differences that Matt mentioned off the off the off the gate, um, there's three main things that separate Sapien and Steemit. The first one, obviously, is the blockchain that you're building on, right? So Steam is on uh, their own blockchain, and it, you know we want to build on a sort of public blockchain that that everyone can sort of uh, see to, and developments are happening as a community. Uh, everything is super transparent. That's why we sort of chose to align ourselves with uh, something like Ethereum or, or, or some of these blockchains that are truly public. Um, and I just felt that we were we wouldn't be able to get that same degree of uh, flexibility from from the Steam chain. You'd pretty much have to do it the way that they were doing it. And there were some things that we liked and some things that we really didn't like. Right. The second big thing is, um, you know, the way that power is distributed on Steam. It's based off how much Steam you hold. Right. So people can just purchase and buy more power on Steam. It. And this was something that you know we thought. Okay, look, it makes sense to get people vested into into your platform, but at the same time, you shouldn't be separating people based off uh, how much how much money they can put into the site, right? So in Sapien, the power on the platform is basically a result of your reputation, right? How do you accrue more 
um, reputation on the site, you, you do that by making quality contributions. So that that's what actually increases your power and it's not your the amount that you hold. So this is like, you know, from a at the core, of, you know, philosophy of these two platforms, that's a little bit different, right? Um, and we think that you know, partnering up with some companies like Dow Stack, we can we can help create create a reputation based social platform that is better for the long term. Um, the last thing we are sort of focusing uh, to attack the mass market too. I think uh, steam it. You know, there's there's some uh, difficulty in understanding you know steam dollars, steam power, steam. What we want to do is sort of simplify that user experience because at the end of the day blockchain won't truly be adopted until people can use the blockchain without even knowing it right it has to be all in the background this blockchain magic stuff like that you know excites me and you know gets all the crypto heads going that stuff needs to be like behind the behind the scenes entirely so even from the start sapiens put a lot of um, resources into the user experience to make sure that you know the end product that we come out with they get the benefits of the blockchain, but you know you don't need to see all the internal wiring, right? You can consider like Coinbase as a as a good example of this, um, and that's like you know fundamentally the three three uh, technical um, sort of ways that we differ ourselves from Steemit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, usually I would ask more details uh, regarding the tokens, how they work. I would ask more questions. Um, about the platform, about the network itself. But this time it's a bit different interview because um, Sapien Network uh, had its pre-sale and decided to cancel its public sale. That's why the second part of this interview would be focused more on why and how and on more details, what's going on next. Mm -hmm. So um, the maybe the first question from that section would be, uh, what was the um, planned um, no, what was the total? Uh, what is the total token supply, and um, how much uh, remained after the pre-sale? That's the. Um, I think that's the most important question uh, I found out from the uh, Telegram group. People right. are still, uh, they are hesitant. They don't really know how much remained. Right. Yeah. So after the pre-sale was finished, uh, so first of all, the total supply was five hundred million tokens. Uh, out of which a significant amount is uh, in, in the platform reserve. 30% uh, is just in the reserve, and this is going to be used to uh, basically incentivize uh, value creation of the network, whether that's signing up as a new user or creating new content until we eventually move to a minting uh, algorithm similar to, to uh, Ethereum or you know, Steam. It also has an inflationary model. Uh, 30% of the tokens are locked up out of the 500 million tokens. 45% uh, uh, is going to public contributors, key partners, uh, you know, uh, people that are contributing in our, in our token sale. So we had 156 million tokens sold in the pre-sale. And we've also been, uh, you know, you mentioned that the public sale was uh, canceled. It was replaced with an accredited sale. This was as per the legal advice of our lawyers. We wanted to be, you know, very careful in this space. We, you know, honestly, no, nobody has a clear idea of, of what the regulation space is right now. You ask 10 different people, you're gonna get 10 different answers, right? So the best that we can do is listen to the advice of our lawyers. And they suggested that like, look, you know, with FinCEN, some policies coming out, um, just the general sentiment uh, of the SEC when it comes to ICOs, it's better to take precautions and mitigate your risk wherever possible. So that's why we decided to just, you know, change the crowd sale to an accredited sale. Um, so accredited people can still participate and they can email us at, you know, sales at saving.network. Um, but we just can't do a, a massive non-accredited sale, um, you know, that we had originally planned. That was mm -hmm. uh, a big change there. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, maybe you'll answer this question. What do you think, what was the reason for such a success uh, in the pre-sale? I think one of the main successes is that we were focused on our community. Um, so a lot of the things that we did, we listened to the feedback that people post up in Telegram, um, you know, some of the feedback that we get on the side. Uh, but a, a majority of it is just building a solid community where everybody's active, everybody's asking questions, helping each other out. Um, and I think in the success, the, the success that's what a majority of the success came from. 
Um, and, you know, granted, we had a very solid team that came together. Again, going back to that story of being a distributed team, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult to, you know, manage some, some of the stuff when you're all in different places of the world. So uh, it was good that we had a team that understood what needed to be done and pretty much got things done without having to be essentially managed. Um, we kind of managed ourselves. Uh, and we, I think, I, I guess one of the best ways to put it is that we, we strategized very intelligently uh, in terms of who we were going after, uh, the markets we were kind of looking into penetrating, and as well as, um, you know, you know the, the content that we were releasing. Uh, most of the people that jump into some of the projects are mainly looking for price action and stuff like that. So we stayed away from that whole arena and we really focused on what we were trying to deliver. So number one, a, a product, um, a solid community uh, and, and great customer service and support. So anytime anybody had a question in Telegram, anytime anybody uh, sent us an email, uh, they get met with a prompt response. Uh, and, and that was something where uh, we tried to make a connection with a lot of our followers as well is to just say, hey, you know, uh, you know, we understand some of the current frustrations in the whole, um, you know, social media landscape, ICO landscape, and we're trying to turn that upside down. Uh, you know, number one, we have a product that you can actually use, you know, when we open it up. Uh, number two, we're here to answer a lot of your questions. And then, you know, number three, it's just, you know, hopefully you guys are aligned with our vision and our mission that we're trying to achieve. And it's, you know, some might think it's ambitious, uh, but I think it's definitely something that's achievable. And I think the timing for us uh, is is really, really solid right now. Uh, you, you're looking at a lot of the stuff that's happening with a lot of the data breaches, uh, a lot of the, you know, more more light is being shown into a lot of the data that's being sold uh, to third parties just to the highest bidder. So I think for us, the timing is right right now. And I think a lot of the our followers and our users our followers in general are, are really seeing the light and, you know, jumping on board, uh, you know, with our mission. So I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, initially the hard cap uh, for the pre-sale was $1 million and then you raised it to 30 million. Uh, was it a sort of a marketing maneuver? Because it's a simple psychology, right? When people hear pre-sale, there is FOMO. They fear to miss out, so they want to participate. It's more like a bankera did something similar to that. Uh, or did you raise the pre-sale cap because you knew that you wanted to cancel the ICO, the public sale? No, definitely did not know any of that in advance. Um, our initial reason of actually raising it is, for us, the community is one with Sapien, and we were, felt so excited that our Telegram group was growing by the thousand people a day we were on top of the telegram tracker every single day and we felt so excited that there was that much interest that we thought it was unfair to limit people from the pre-sale right and at that time like there was a hundred percent a plan to have a crowd sale this was all very new developments that happened when we were in san francisco at token fest so our thought was like look our entire hard cap is 30 million our group has grown 20 fold in the past 15 20 days we think we need to open up the entire thing, right? And we decided to do that as a way to give everyone a fair shot of getting involved. And we, wanted, we even went as far as to in, implement a, a tiered refund system just in case it went over. We wanted everyone to have an opportunity to participate because we appreciated the support and they're all part of the Sapien platform and, and what we're building. And uh, we just said, look, like let's just remove the 1 million cap for the presale and completely open it up to the entire crowd sale uh, cap, which was 30 million. And then as time progresses and as things change and through advice with our lawyers and obviously a situation with the crowd sale, um, we had to maneuver and make the decision that was safest legally and best for the platform long term. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you decided to cancel the ICO, the, um, the public sale, uh, you gave um, the public your community to decide to vote what to do with the remaining tokens, right? right. So there was two options uh, to distribute the remaining amount or to burn it. And the vote, it was a very close vote, right? right. So uh, right. 1,481 um, voted to distribute and 1,432 uh, um, voted to burn it. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the result was to distribute it, and the remaining tokens, there are more than 16 million of them, will be distributed by April 29. Mm -hmm. So tell us what would have happened if the community voted differently, and what does it mean now when the tokens are distributed? Yes, I mean, uh, that's, uh, you know, another, you know, we're, we're just aligned with our core value again, right? The democracy of this entire platform. What greater say uh, can people want than like, you know, the people that participated, they get to decide what to do with the remaining tokens, right? Like that's, um, we think, a power in and of itself, right? Anyone in the community who was interested in, in, in the Sapien platform and in, in our mission, they should have a voice in, in saying what should happen to those tokens. So, I mean, that's what they choose, chose. And, you know, we're going to be distributing those 16 million tokens uh, to people proportionally uh, based on their uh, contribution. And, you know, everyone gets a little bit more tokens. So it's just a reason to be happy. So. But uh, were you planning to burn the unsold tokens? uh during the um public sale were so, you planning to burn them originally we had it we, we would transfer them to the platform reserve um okay. so that would be going adding to that 30 percent. but you know rob and i were, were you know we were talking and we don't want to have a huge sort of centralized allocation of tokens so you know we thought might as well just give away those tokens as uh, as mm -hmm. we had that might be a better sort of solution. And again, a lot of this stuff with this ICO stuff, you're 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 basically fixing a plane while you're flying, right? You're 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 sort of just looking at the, what's the best uh, sort of decision that you know keeps us aligned with our values and 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 the community can receive this as as positively. And that's you know all we did. We just adapted mm -hmm. to the situation, and um, you know I think everyone's pretty happy with the outcome. So it doesn't matter what outcome would be, whether distribute or burn, uh, it won't affect the ecosystem, right? No, no, it won't. I think individuals in the community, you know, we're having very exciting discussions about, you know, the, the effect of is distributing versus burning. And I, I think it was great for just engagement and everyone was able to, you know, voice their opinion and, and everyone has their own theories about how tokenomics should work. It was just great to hear everyone so uh, enthusiastic about um, what they felt was the best uh, approach. And you know, at the end of the day, we thought like, why should we be deciding exactly like every single thing, right? Why don't we leave this up to the community and, and see what they what they say? Um, yes. Yeah. And, and I hope we can do this for more and more decisions in the future. Uh, and it's sort of aligned with one of the, our utilities of the token, which is the democratized autonomous platform. Which is to say that it's not really my, you know, you know, this kid Ankit's, uh, you know, sort of responsibility to choose exactly what makes sense for the platform at all times. Maybe, maybe the community should have more and more power when it comes to making some key decisions. And you know, that's this is just sort of a taste of what's to come. And, and mm -hmm. just one point to add to that too, we we plan on incorporating that idea into a lot of decisions coming up in the future. It was honestly a great experience and. I hope to see more token projects putting it up to, to vote and let your community decide where you're going to go and what you're going to do, because that's the, the whole point of the movement we're trying to create here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so it was a rehearsal, actually. Yeah. Before the <laughs> network was. Launched. Yeah. yeah, I just want to jump in on that also, is that what was really cool is, um, so some of the members had a good grasp of the difference between distribution and burning. But what was really, really awesome to see, too, is some of the the members that weren't so familiar with either of the two terms or the pros and cons of each, they were all learning from each other. And I thought that was really, really awesome. It was so uh, some of the members that were more familiar with distribution and burning were educating all the other members being like, hey, here's the, here's the pro of distributing. Here's the pro of, of burning the tokens. Here's the cons of both. And I thought that was really, really, it, it was like a, its own little thing. It, it was really cool to see that. And that, that was probably one of the, uh, best things that I was able to see dur during that whole um, you know discussion, and mm -hmm. for the most part, it was just a, a friendly discussion between both parties. So you had you know one group that was for distribution, one group for burning the tokens, but they were they kind of saw each other as um, you know everybody had their own opinion, but it was cool to see like they, they respected each other, they respected each other's uh opinion off that and they could see the pros for burning and they could see the pros for distribution but you know everybody kind of has their own uh idea of what's beneficial 
Um, so it was cool. And, and even when everything was done, what was awesome too was to see that a lot of people were saying, hey, you know, I know distribution won out. I voted for burn, but I'm okay with distribution. Uh, you know, I'm totally okay with that. Um, you know, I know it's for the benefit of the platform. So I thought that was one of the cool parts about that whole um, getting the community involved uh, aspect into it. Yeah, I wanted to mention that, uh, that some people actually did write that. And I got educated myself actually reading this discussions why uh, pro is better or, or well, why uh, burning is better or distributing is better. So yes, the discussions were very informative. Uh, so the next question then, um, maybe more serious one. So what do you have to say to people who invested on the first days of the pre-sale and now in loss in terms of US dollars compared to those who bought tokens at a later stage when Ethereum dropped from $1,100 to $600? Um, well, I think for the people who, who contributed, uh, one, we're always working off of ETH rate. So USD is not something that we operate on and we made that switch uh, pretty early on before the pre-sale, we actually changed our hard cap from uh, 30 million to 30,000 ETH. And that was for a reason, because we're operating off of ETH rate, where it's a cryptocurrency project. And I think what we've done a great job at, and it's been easy because we have such a fantastic community, is really including them in everything and putting them first. And the way we do that is by when we cancel the crowd sale, we open up, uh, you know, everyone initially got a 10% extra allocation of tokens that they actually should have gotten yesterday when we started sending out the tokens a few days ago. And then we had the remaining amount and we let them decide what they wanted to do with that. And I think what's really important for us now is April 30th, uh, SBN becomes transferable. We're giving everybody a window until the 29th to distribute their tokens and uh, get, get them to the users. And that day, our beta is coming out. And that day, you're gonna go on to Sapien, you're gonna go to Sapien Network, you're gonna go into the beta and it's gonna check your wallet, your MetaMask to make sure you have SBN to access the platform. And for us, that's really cool because we said in the beginning that we were going to deliver a platform that had instant utility for the, for the token from day one. And that's what we're doing. And it's motivating. And we, I want to see more projects as someone who's just a cryptocurrency fan and an ICO fan. I want to see more projects that when I get my token, my utility token, I can use it on the platform that day. I think it's great for the entire ecosystem. And I'm, I'm really happy we're delivering on that promise. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I would probably say uh, people start thinking in terms of cryptos and start and stop counting US dollars. Yes. Yeah. Um, then next question, there was a uh, message from the bot on the uh, Telegram group saying um, over the next few weeks, the Sapien team is letting people who signed up before the end of the sale who experienced technical difficulties or had KYC pending, pending can contribute. After this message, there was a rage in the group because, again, there was the same um, the same debate about uh, that people contributed in average a thousand ETH, a thousand dollars in ETH, and now those who can participate now they will buy it on a price of four hundred per ETH. Uh, so, is there any chance that tokens will be locked? This is the main question in the group. Mm -hmm. Oh. Um, so wait, you're talking about the accredited sale or you're talking about during the pre-sale? I'm a little confused with like the time frame there. Uh, so the, the question is regarding not, not, okay. So those who had problems with KYC, I understood that the people who actually signed up for the pre-sale, but that they had problems to participate, yeah. right? Yeah, well, that was directly involved to the to pre-sale and actually goes with something that we're really pushing as a concept for Sapien. Um, we want for a lot of people in the future and in the near future, Sapien probably will be their first cryptocurrency experience. And we had a great talk with one of our UX UI designers yesterday about really making the platform simple and easy for people to use and introducing people to cryptocurrency. And that's the same approach we took with our crowd sale, right? So after the pre-sale ended, there was like a seven day span where people who may have been new to cryptocurrency were having some issues with the portal and, you know, doing some of the things we actually assigned people who walked them through the process and showed them like, Hey, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. So we didn't feel like it was right for people who were generally having issues to have the date close on them immediately. Right. So we allowed like a four to five day extra window where we weren't letting new people sign up. But if you were already approved for KYC and AML, you already passed all of our tests and you needed a little extra assistance. 
you would have someone help walk you through, answer any questions you had, and, and take it from there. Right, mm -hmm. and just, just to add to that, I mean, this goes more with the, the ethos of, the, of our platform and Sapien and what we want to do. It's not just that people that are accustomed to crypto, you know, there's going to be a 10 minute window with a gas war where they have the chance to participate, right? Like, that's ridiculous. I mean, if, if you truly want to create a better future for cryptocurrency, you have to open these opportunities up to everyone. Right, anyone who wants to participate in in this, you know, Sapien token, so ought to have that right. Right, so so this is something that you know we were uh, our CTO Aurel did a fantastic job of creating a very unique uh, contribution model that was free from any gas wars. You could have sent it with a two gig away and, and still been able to get your transaction through. Right, like we 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 really think that we approach this differently from uh, a majority of other ICOs and made this a uh, a, a great experience to be part of, right? and, and, you know, that, I don't have anything more to say than that. Chris, you want to add something? No, no, I mean, <laughs> you, okay. you hit it right on the head. Um, again, it was just about uh, going back to just supporting our community. Um, if you looked at some of our chat in the beginning, a lot of people were saying, oh my gosh, like, is there going to be a gas war for this? Uh, and we kept reiterating actually over and over in the chat that, Everybody that wants to participate is going to get an opportunity to, to participate. And we stayed true to our word for that. We, we really did. And I, I think that's rare for a lot of the other projects is, is um, you know, when something like this comes up, uh, it's easy to be, to go after, you know, some of the big guns, but we stayed, again, we stayed true with, with our uh, community and just saying, you know, if you want to participate, you're going to get a chance you're not going to be locked out. You're not going to be, you know, uh, gas ward out, um, you, you're, you're going to get an opportunity. And, and again, like, like I said, we supported our community and we gave every, every single person a chance to, to be able to participate. So I think that's great. Yes, I think that's, that's awesome. And that's definitely fair to newcomers. Um, so my final question. So now when the sale is over, when everything is settled, what are you working on? It's all the focus on the platform, the community, and the business, right? Right. That's it. There's no. There's nothing else to it. I mean, we're at the end of the day. People want to complicate up businesses. They're not that hard, right? It's the people, people you know, that matter. The the people that support our mission. Our mission. Getting really skilled, passionate teachers is one of my main jobs. Getting people along in this journey that truly believe in our vision. Our vision. Uh, getting the, the right partners, the key strategic partners to help make safe and success, you know, that's, that's what I'm spending my time doing. Uh, huge focus on the platform, you know, version one, that's the, the one people will see at the end of April. Uh, already we're in progress with version two, which is a completely new tech stack. Uh, you know, for those that are low tech savvy, it's gonna be built with GraphQL and a polo stack. And that's like a really exciting uh, you know, new, technology that we want to sort of push for. Um, we'll also be working on a young paper. Uh, you know, that's something that uh, we'll be, you know, working on with the CTO and, and making sure that's that's right and ready to go. And yeah, just sort of growing from there, you know, spreading the movement, uh, you know, focusing on developing and, and building that web 3.0 social experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, traditional 45 seconds uh, in the end of our interview, but you choose who would be addressing our audience. Yeah, Andre, do you want to go? Yeah. I'm going? <laughs> um, so, wait, what is this, like 45 seconds? Anything you want to say to our audience? <laughs> Follow us on... Telegram or join our Telegram community at Sapien Network. Uh, at Sapien Network. S-A-P-I-E-N Network. S -A -P -I -N network. Uh, that's what Telegram. Twitter, we're Sapien underscore network. Uh, email us at team at Sapien Network if you want to connect. Uh, our website is www.sapien.network. And we look forward to you know talking with you guys. We're so excited to be in this position and, and, and you know at this point in time. Uh, and we just want to make sure that we deliver on the on our promises. So uh, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or concerns, or just want to say hi. So. Okay, awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for this interview. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot.
And I hope it Thank was you. very helpful and informative uh, for our audience, for your audience as well, and for the community of SAPIN Network in general. Um, the audience, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, just write them. Uh, join their Telegram group. You will get educated a lot. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions to me, leave them in the comment section below this video and we'll come back to you with the answers. Um, well, thank you so much and see you next time. Thank you, Leila. Thank you. Bye-bye.